what were Old West saloons really like? So, saloons started first serving liquors when the Pioneer Inn and Tavern Law was passed. Since then, the varnished mahogany bar has become a companion to frontier people as they tell their stories. And speaking of that, at the end of this video, you'll discover the story behind this appalling name, Bucket of Blood Saloon. Well, without further ado, let's begin. If you haven't heard it yet, in most boom towns during the Old West, there would always be more saloons than churches, hospitals, and other typical establishments that a town should have. And that's what makes a place more unique, as you've got to be different from the rest. Just like in this photo of Table Bluff Saloon. They surely got the shot as most of their furniture were made from hunted wild beasts. In those days, saloons were the only establishment that was literally available anytime, any day. It would be serving patrons 24 hours a day and 7 days a week. And the best part was the alcohol served was really cheap. The beer would cost you a nickel, while two shots of a hard beverage would only be a quarter. And despite that, business is business, so most owners would water down the whiskeys or add some unusual ingredients like ammonia, cayenne, and even gunpowder. So, would you try a drink? And as for more opportunities open, boom towns were popping like crazy everywhere. So, along with these towns, saloons were getting more popular each day. The hype was pushing the owners to diversify, so they started offering different amenities like gambling, dance halls, and inns. But the most sought for were the beautiful saloon women. They were dressed in thin clothes, dancing and keeping every man amused and entertained. But they rarely doubled as a prostitute though some choose to do to earn some fast cash. Okay, the Wild West would not be called the Wild West without its blatant violence. In fact, the lawlessness was in full swing. So, adding alcohol and gambling into the fray, mixed all together, would be a total disaster. With that, the gamblers honed their aim to protect themselves and their assets. So, it's not uncommon that after playing for row, these men would later continue outside, and sometimes even inside, pulling their guns out. Then it's a shootout. This photo showed the amusing fellow called Soapy Smith, a certified con artist who, with prized soap scams, earned a fortune and built massive outlaw networks under his lead. Along with his gang members, they would flood saloons sometimes to have fun, but most of the time to make trouble. However, after robbing someone with $80,000 worth of gold, Smith met his maker, as he was killed in a shootout after the robbing incident. The person standing in the middle was the saloon keeper of the Bucket of Blood Saloon. And that gory, if not an appalling name, came from a gruesome tale about a smuggler who was killed and was thrown in a well, making the water fetch from it a bucket of blood. Well, that was folklore. But actually, many saloons claimed that they were the real Bucket of Blood Saloon and had their own backstories. However, the most famous was in 1886, when a deadly shootout started over a poker game and broke out, drenching the saloon's floors with buckets of blood. Since then, that saloon has been called the Bucket of Blood Saloon. You've discovered an amazing story about Old West saloons. Now click this and discover what a Wild West duel really looked like.